All right, so apparently the kids these days are hating on us millennials for wearing jean jackets, but you know what? Can't care. Hi everybody, for those of you who are new here, my name is Zach, I'm a photographer and arts administrator based in Santa Barbara, California. And this morning I tried streaming for the first time on the channel um, and everything went well it seemed until after the stream when I viewed the video and realized that my voice was like super high and I sounded like a mouse and it was crazy and nobody told me. <laughs> but I'm bringing you this video, <laughs> re-recording this video to keep it on my channel and sound normal this time. So today we're talking about presets. This is my series where I share with you some presets that I think are worth the money. Everybody and their mom are selling presets and it's a great way to support your favorite creators. It's a great way as a creator to make some money, but I feel like a lot of the time the presets that are available that you pay loads of money for um, aren't actually that great and make your life kind of miserable. I've paid for loads of presets that I never use, that I use once and realized that they were awful and never use them and it feels like it was a waste of money. So I'm making this video and this video series to help you decide where to invest your money when it comes to digital assets like presets uh, for Lightroom. In today's video, we're talking specifically about the Cascade one presets. These are presets that were created by Benj Heish. They're really popular presets for wedding photographers. Benj is a wedding photographer based in the Pacific Northwest. He has an incredible YouTube channel here. If you haven't checked out his videos, you definitely need to. Um, his content is really informational and inspiring. Um, just looking at his pictures is, is really inspiring. Uh, so the Cascade presets are available online for I think $79. And they're just solid presets. I mean, across the board, they work really great. Benj gives you um, several different presets, which we'll take a look at, as well as several different Lightroom tools to help you with editing your images. Now, I said this in the first video in this series, but what we're looking for when we buy presets is number one, we want the presets to build consistency into our work. So that's one reason for buying presets so that we always give ourselves um, a place to start and it helps us build consistency into our work. The second thing, and maybe the more important thing with presets particularly, is we want them to improve our workflow. So like I said before, a lot of presets really slow us down. You can apply a preset and then have to like tweak it so much that it actually increases the time that you would have spent editing anyway. And that just, uh, it's just so counterproductive. So we want presets that will enhance our work and that will improve our workflow. So let's dive into Lightroom and take a look at the Cascade presets. Here we are in Adobe Lightroom and I have a series of images that I'm gonna show you today. You may have seen some of these before, but there are also several new ones. These are shot on a variety of cameras. I think today we have the 5D Mark IV, the X100V, the US R6, and a Leica Q2. So we're gonna look at a variety of images across different camera systems and see how these Cascade presets can be applied. If you look over here on the left-hand side, you can see a list of all the presets. So I'll just, scroll through one by one so we can see what's going on here as we see a preview of the preset on our image. So we have 00 Cascade. This is the standard Cascade preset. We have a warm variant of that. Then we have Cascade Dark and we have a warm variant of that. We have Cascade Indoor, specifically made for indoor photography. We have Indoor Warm. Dance Flash, obviously made for Dance Flash. Dance Flash Warm. Sparkler, this is for the sparkler exit at weddings. Again, we have a standard and a warm variant. And then we have a black and white and a black and white dark. Okay, down below here, we have cascade tools. These are the tools that I mentioned. So we have various grains. We have a color shift to make it cooler. Um, another grain here, cascade grain off. So we could have no grain. We also have lens corrections on and off and we have shadows cooler or shadows warmer. So really cool, we have these awesome uh, presets up here, and then we have these tools to further enhance our images. So for this image, I'm gonna go ahead and apply Cascade Dark Warm, and I think right off the bat, that looks pretty great, and I'm just going to uh, bring up the shadows and bring down the highlights. And here is a before, and here is an after, and I think that looks really great. This image was shot on the Canon 5D Mark IV with the 24 millimeter 1.4 L lens from Canon. Um, love it. Looks awesome. 
Here is an image shot on the Fujifilm X100V. Uh, if you look up here in the top right hand corner, you can see the camera settings. Um, so for this one, let's just see what Cascade does. I think that looks great. Maybe Cascade warm since it's a sunset photo. And I think right off the bat, that looks pretty good. Here is a before and here is an after. I might bring down the highlights just a little bit, maybe bring down the whites a little bit and maybe bring down the blacks a little bit to add a little bit more contrast. And I might actually warm this photo up a touch. And I think that looks pretty awesome. So that is um, a before and that is an after. Yeah, it looks really cool. Here's a similar photo to the last one, again, shot on the X100V. So let's apply Cascade. Let's see what Cascade Dark looks like. I think I'm gonna go with the, the Cascade Warm, just the standard Cascade, Cascade Warm. And I'm gonna bring down the highlights and I'm gonna bring down the blacks and I'm gonna bring up the shadows a little bit. And here is a before and here's an after. Uh, for this one, I might add some heavy grain. Uh, that looks a little bit too much. Maybe I'll just add black and white grain. Um, so I'm adding this black and white grain tool and let's see what shadows warmer looks like. Shadows cooler. I think I'm gonna go with shadows warmer. Um, and so here's a before and here's an after. I think that looks pretty cool. If I zoom in here, you can see the grain detail. Um, super nice. Okay, so here is an image shot on the EOS R6 with the little 40 millimeter 2.8 macro lens. Just to show you guys, like this little lens is, is pretty awesome. I think it cost me like a hundred bucks and it's super small. This is actually that lens right here. It's a pretty nice little lens, super compact pancake lens and super cheap. And like, this is the image that came out of it. It's super sharp. The bokeh is nice on this. This is the first little prime lens that I used for a long time on my Rebel T2i. So anyway, just a side note, really great cheap little lens from Canon. I think for this one, I'm gonna apply Cascade. Actually, let's see what Cascade Dark looks like. I think I'll go with Cascade Dark. Yeah, just the regular Cascade Dark and I might bring up the shadows just a touch. Actually, I might bring up the entire exposure just a little bit and I'll drop those shadows back. And I'll bring down the highlights a little bit. Here's a before and here's an after. I think for this one, I'll add just some color grain so it's not as strong grain. And I think that looks pretty great. All right, so here we have an image from a wedding that I was a second shooter at a couple months ago. And here is where we'll see how these images look in the sort of wedding environment for which they were created. As you've seen, they work in tons of situations, not just weddings, but this will give you an idea of what they look like on actual wedding photos. So I'm just gonna apply Cascade One, maybe uh, the dark version. So if I was gonna make this uh, color photo, I would apply Cascade Dark, this number two here, but I think I'm actually gonna make it black and white. So I'm gonna make it a black and white dark, just for comparison, here's black and white light, here's black and white dark. I'm gonna bring down the highlights, bring down the whites, maybe bring up the shadows just a little bit. This is a before and this is an after. He has a heavy grain tool here, which I will apply here because I like having a more coarse looking grain on black and white photos. I think that looks pretty cool. Here is another image from that wedding. This was shot on the Canon R6 with a 50 millimeter 1.2 L. I was shooting with an ND filter, so you can see my settings up here, ISO 100 f2, 1 over 20th of a second shutter speed, so it's pretty slow shutter. I was shooting with an ND filter to sort of get this bit of motion blur here um, as she was twirling her dress. So I'm going to apply Cascade. I might actually apply Cascade Dark. Yeah, Cascade Dark is where we're going to go here. This image is a little bit warm for me, so I'm going to bring this down to 6500. I'm gonna bring the highlights down, bring the shadows up a little bit, bring the whites down, maybe bring the overall exposure up a little bit. Yeah, and here's a before and here's an after. I think that looks pretty great. Here's an image from Big Sur uh, a couple weeks ago. Chanel and I took a road trip up to Seattle, snapped this photo on um, one of the pool offs at Big Sur. So I'm just gonna apply Cascade Dark here and I might bring down the highlights and bring down the blacks. Here's a before, here's an after. So you can sort of see we have a pattern here of just applying the preset. So we'll apply here Cascade Dark. Might bring down the overall exposure, bring down the highlights, bring down the whites. 
here's a before and here's an after. So for all these images, I'm sort of just applying the preset. It looks really great right off the bat. And then I'm adjusting a few things in the basic panel and they're pretty much good to go. You can go in and make further adjustments in HSL, in uh, the color grading, but most of the time I feel like I don't need to do that. And that for me is a sign of a great preset that they're just applied. You would do some basic tweaking in the basic panel, maybe adjust your grain or your crop or those sorts of um, specific kinds of details. But for the most part, you can just throw on the preset and run with it. And that's why I love these Cascade presets. So here's an image of my friends Joyce and John at their maternity session. So it's dusk in Santa Barbara. I love this photo, love the sky here. I'm gonna apply Cascade Warm. Uh, yeah, I think I'll apply Cascade Warm. And I'll just bring up the shadows a little bit and bring down the highlights a little bit. Maybe bring up the shadows a little bit more. I think that looks awesome. So here's a before and here's an after. So you can see that in this specific image, you know, it's kind of dark. You can see that beautiful detail in the sky as the sun is, is setting, this sort of dusky, pinky hues. And what I love about this preset is it maintains that. It gives it a really unique color and yet it still maintains that beautiful color detail from the actual uh, environment. A lot of the time presets might mask some of the beautiful colors that you've actually captured in camera from your environment. And that's something that I don't want to happen when I apply a preset. So I'm glad that these Cascade presets sort of maintain the beautiful colors that I've already captured in camera. This is a really good example of that. Here's an image of my, my girlfriend, again shot on the R6 with the ND filter. So we have ISO 100, 50 millimeter 1.2L, F1.8 with a shutter speed of one over 15th of a second because I was using my two to five stop variable ND filter. So you have this little motion blur here right at sunset. I'm gonna apply Cascade Dark Warm. Let's see what that looks like. What is Cascade Warm? No, I think I'll just apply Cascade Dark. And that looks pretty cool. Again, same idea here. Gonna bring down the highlights, bring down the whites, bring up the shadows just a touch and bring down the blacks to add in some more contrast. This image looks a little bit green to me. So I'm just gonna bring the tint closer to purple by a little bit. I think it's okay to be this warm because it is a sunset photo. By the way, look at this beautiful lens flare over here from the 51.2, favorite lens ever, just awesome. So here's a before and here's an after. I think that looks pretty cool. This is another wedding that I shot a few weeks ago. I'm gonna apply Cascade Dark. Let's see it. Yeah, yeah, Cascade Dark. Let's see what Cascade Warm. Uh, I think maybe Cascade Dark Warm. That's a little bit bright, so I'm just gonna bring down the exposure, bring in some more of that contrast. I'm gonna bring up the shadows, bring down the highlights, bring down the whites. I might bring the exposure back just a touch. Yeah, something like that's nice. Here is a before, and here's an after. I think that looks pretty cool. Obviously I would go in and retouch out these <laughs> random uh, photo bombers here, but uh, for this video, we'll just leave it like this. Now this is interesting. This photo was shot on a 45 millimeter tilt shift lens. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. This is a tilt shift lens. They're really interesting uh, <laughs> lenses. It's a completely manual focus lens. You can tilt them on the various axes for various types of images. So these were originally made for architecture photography to prevent that sort of weird distortion that you get with buildings where the buildings sort of feel like they're falling back. This can give you really straight lines in architecture photography. But what it also does is create a skewed plane of focus. So typically your plane of focus would be uh, vertical, right? So you have a certain uh, area in the image that is sharp and in focus when you use your camera to focus, right? You have a plane of focus and it's from top to bottom. With the tilt shift lens, it changes that plane of focus. So basically instead of being vertical, um, the focus tilts like this. So instead of being vertical like this, it's like this. What you find is that instead of having out of focus area, um, in front of and behind your subject, you have out of focus area um, on the top and bottom of the image or on the right and left of the image, depending on how you shot the photo. The plane of focus becomes more 
it's tilted, hence the name tilt shift, but it becomes like closer to horizontal. So you have more space in there um, to achieve focus, if that makes sense. I can make a whole video on this if this is interesting to you. But basically um, what this does creates this beautiful kind of uh, effect where here in this specific example, um, we have them in focus here, you know, their chest up to their um, head here is all in focus, but then up here and down here is out of focus. So it's this really beautiful effect. This is something that I learned from Eric Floberg's channel. If any of you have watched his channel, you'll, you'll definitely recognize this as one of the features of his work. And he has a really great video about how to use tilt shift lenses. Like I said, they're manual lenses. So they take a little bit of getting used to, but with the R6, um, you know, with the magnification and everything, it's super easy to shoot with them. So I love using this lens for these type of images. Okay, so here is another image from that same wedding. This one's gonna be black and white. So I'm gonna apply the Cascade black and white dark. I might bring down the highlights, bring down the whites and bring up the shadows. And I'm gonna apply the heavy grain. That looks pretty awesome. Here is a before, here is an after. Now here's a photo of my sister's dog, Maggie. And for this image, I think it could work in color and black and white. So I'm gonna apply Cascade, I think just the standard Cascade here. I'm gonna bring up the exposure, bring down the highlights and the whites and bring up the shadows. Uh, maybe bring up the exposure a little bit more. It looks a little purple to me, so I'm gonna bring in some more greens. Maybe warm it up a little bit. Here's a before, there's an after. I'm gonna press command quotation marks to create a copy of this image. I'm gonna reset that and apply black and white light. I'm gonna bring up the exposure, bring down those highlights and those whites, bring up the shadows. And I think that looks pretty cool. So here's a before and an after. Okay, so here's an image shot on the Leica Q2. I actually have this camera with me here. This is the Leica Q2. This is a point and shoot camera from Leica. It's like a $5,000 point and shoot camera, but it is a full frame camera from Leica and it features a 28 millimeter 1.7 Sumalux lens, a full frame 47 megapixel sensor. So there's a lot of really awesome stuff happening in this camera and I wanted to try it out. So I rented it and I'm filming a test video later today to test it out. I'm gonna be making a few videos about the Leica Q2 for you. I've taken some images with this, just have walked around my neighborhood a little bit. This is one, this photo of this bee, and you can see if we zoom in here, even to 200%, like how much detail the sensor captures, it's pretty amazing. And you can see how beautiful the out of focus area is and how beautiful the colors are straight out of camera uh, from this Leica. So let's see how the Cascade presets are applied to this image. I think I'm gonna apply number one which looks pretty great right off the bat. And again, bring down the highlights, maybe bring down the overall exposure and bring up the shadows. So here's a before and here's an after. Um, looks pretty great. Another image shot on the Leica Q2. Again, you can see this beautiful, beautiful out of focus area from that uh, 28 millimeter Sumalux lens. This was shot at f2.8 and still you get this really gorgeous bokeh. So I'm gonna apply Cascade to this one too, maybe warm it up just a little bit, bring down the highlights and bring up the shadows and bring down the blacks. And I think that looks pretty awesome. Here's a before, there's an after. I'm not a street photographer at all, but I took the Leica Q2 out for some street photography in Santa Barbara and was just blown away by how much I enjoyed using the camera uh, in manual focus. It's just a really enjoyable camera to use when you're focusing manually, which is not something I do all the time, but I, I was doing it most of the time when I was using the Q2 because I just really loved it, it was awesome. So let's see what this looks like when applied to like this type of image. Again, look at all this incredible detail from that high megapixel sensor from the Q2. I'm gonna apply Cascade. Right off the bat, that looks pretty awesome. Might bring down the highlights. And for this kind of image, I'll just apply auto transform to try and straighten it up a little bit. I'm not sure how good of a job that actually did, but maybe it helped fix the crop there. Here's a before, after. Anyway, we'll leave it there, but that gives you an idea of what this type of image looks like. Here again is <laughs> my uh, attempt at street photography. So we'll apply cascade here, 
which automatically looks really great. Bring down the highlights and you have something like this. So again, super cool. Um, I was zone focusing here with the Leica Q2 and obviously uh, was was not doing the best job, but I sort of liked the vibe of this photo and the color of the bike. So I think with that, we'll call it a day. I hope you've enjoyed this video, seeing some of these images and, and getting an idea of what the Cascade presets can do. Again, just to recap, when we're buying presets, we want presets that will improve our workflow, right? We want presets that we can apply to our work and they actually help us in our editing process by improving our workflow and building consistency into our work. Um, it's really annoying when you spend a lot of money on presets and they just mess you up. So I hope that this video series helps you as you're investing in these digital assets. Let me know what you think about the Cascade presets, if you use them. If there are other presets that you really like that you want me to check out, let me know. If you like this video, please check out the first video in this series, which I'll link up on the screen. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I'd love to see you at the next video. Thank you, thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Love is